Afternoon everyone. In this video we're going to talk a little bit about the Midnight Suns leadership and kind of maybe a different way to approach Midnight Suns thinking. Um, I'm still very, I mean I wasn't even going to talk about Midnight Suns because I've been so fascinated and love playing Convocation. I even have new ideas there that I want to try and I and I don't foresee myself going away from that for the near future at least from a competitive standpoint but you know when I'm doing random games and playing friends multiple times you know you do want to be able to offer something that isn't the same strange convocation list all, all, all the time and, and Midnight Suns were one that popped in my head you know I, it's weird I'm looking for you know I always want things to be good I don't want to play crap but you don't want to play or at least I don't want to play some of the more popular uh, affiliations like I don't want to play Hellfire, I don't want to play Webs, I don't want to play Wakanda, I don't want to play X Men for the most part, like those kind of ones. But I also don't want to play shit like Sentinels. Um, and so you get this really weird mix in, in MCP. And this is a slight tangent rant before we talk about Midnight Suns, where you know you think of Winter Guard for example. And I'm not here to disparage any Winter Guard players, but you you, you look at Winter Guard and you say, wow, they only have I don't know what five or six models. And their leadership is fine, but not that interesting. They have one of the best, you know, Dynamo is a great model, one of the best models in the game, and he's their leader, so great, you get to play him every game. But but at the same time, it feels like when you're building a list, you're like, okay, what are they good at? Okay, I need to fill gaps with splashes. And then at some point, you're just like, why don't I just splash Dynamo? I mean, Dynamo's great on ease. Why don't I just splash Dynamo in another list? Like, unless there's something to really draw you in because of the splash mechanic, you're really looking at for, like, a core three to four models and then saying, fuck it, you know, what meshes with the leadership? And they don't really have a leadership that is interesting mesh from a mesh standpoint. It's like, okay, they can't be pushed if they're potentially if they're on a secure or whatever, and they get to shake the condition. Okay, the only cool part about it is, like, with grunts, like, Either Ultron Grunts or, or, you know, Red Skull 2 Grunts, they can come in, shake their stagger, and double activate, right? Okay, great. That, that's like a cool thing, but I don't think it's enough to push the affiliation. Now, if you obviously want to play Winter Guard and you enjoy them, go play them. But it's there's a couple affiliations in MCP that kind of fall into that rut of their cards aren't cool enough and their affiliated models aren't cool enough to dictate like playing them as some like unlocking something weird like you play them and you feel like okay they're they're fine and i'm probably him hindering myself in some capacity um uh, there's i guess what i'm trying to say is that doesn't interest me and neither does playing obviously the most popular powerful stuff um and so i think midnight suns is, a, is one that kind of came up it's come up a couple times in my MCP stuff, thinking through it. I think it would be this and, like, going back to Sam's F first Avenger Steve would be the most too interesting at the very, very moment. Um, but every time I make a first Avenger Steve roster, I get kind of bored. Um, you know, we can even go into a little bit about there's different styles of leadership in MCP, right? And there's probably a little more niche categories in there, but, like, there's power leaderships that Curtis loves to play. Hellfire, um, A Force, Xavier, Cyclops, stuff like that. Just C One, just different versions of like the same type of thing in a sense, right? Um, Steve is reducing superpowers, and uh, Professor X is doing superpowers to give power to other people, and Cyclops is doing damage to give power, and Hellfire is standing on points to give power. A Force is taking damage on a different model to give power to a different one. And so there's this yin, this push and pull of like, it's kind of all the same shit in a way, except you're just getting there in different ways. Steve's is always on, but it's only superpowers, and you have to have at least one power because they have to be two cost superpowers. Xavier's have to be one cost to turn on, and you can give the power to anybody, but it's only once per turn. And A Force, you can keep stacking it on one person. I don't know, whatever all. And if Magneto's the same way, he can destroy buildings and give power. Like, it's, it's just different flavors of similar stuff. Um, and to a sense, all those power leaderships in, in a little bit of a way has kind of made uh, Black Bolt, while still good, like, 
even his feels a little men now. Like he used to be super unique, like passing power and whatnot. And now there's a couple like with Xavier, like the fact that he can just stack power on somebody by doing other leadership, uh, other superpowers doesn't negate Black Bull's usefulness. It's a different mechanic, but it does take away some of the little bit of flavor I think it had on it. That being said, those are like power leaderships. And then there's like attack modification leaderships, which I, I find to be maybe the, the most boring of them all. Like, okay, X-Forces, no one's going to say X-Forces leadership is bad, right? You get to reroll, you, you, you reroll, uh, you can reroll a skull. If it's a, if you re use the reroll and they have cover, they get rid of cover. It's just damage. It's great. Um, same with Red Skull 3s. It's just skull crits exploding. They're, they're pretty freaking boring. I, I find, and I've played both of them uh, a decent bit. Um, whereas, at least First Avengers is like interesting. It like it's extra damage, and it turns on some triggers potentially. Like you can do some cool stuff there. Um, and there's like a whole other subset of leaderships that um, I guess there's like more active like like the ones I've said before, and this is not shocking. Sam's leadership has drawn me. Um, Convocation Bump has obviously been a big one, and I love playing it. And so I think the natural one that kind of lines up into that area, you could kind of say Storms, but it's only one hop, is Midnight Sun's leadership. Because you get a bump, but it's active and not reactive like uh, Convocation. You can, you know, it's a different thing. But I like those things that can change the board state, <clears throat> um, turn on a couple more things. I think... I think the Convocation one is a little harder for opponents to play around because, um, you know, you you basically get it by them attacking you, so they have a lot to think about, where I think Midnight Suns, I mean, the onus is on you, and they can technically, you know, they technically can map it out. I mean, they can map out the Convocation one a little bit if they know what's coming, but maybe it's harder to think about. Um, the point being is, I like the Midnight Suns leadership. I think it's really cool. I think no one's going to tell you otherwise. I think power leaderships draw people in because on paper it's it's kind of really cool to like get things going early in the game and you get stuff turned on. And I think it's also pretty easy to kind of map out everything. And I think Midnight Suns, like I think Convocation Bump there's nothing you can really map out, right? Like you can, I've said, I've shown videos of like, oh, if you do this and somebody hits you, you can bump here and you have the range, but it does require somebody to hit you. And so when you play against it and you play with it, you feel the power of the bump. But on paper, it's, it's harder to feel that power or that influence because it's not obvious. And I think... Midnight Suns bump is in the middle. I think you can map out some early things, um, and, and at the same time, like it's dynamic throughout the whole course of the game. You know, you're not just doing your turn one stuff and then you never bump again, but it just gives you options, and that's really fascinating. So this video is going to talk about the leadership, and again, we're not we're not going to talk about Midnight Suns model specifically. I'm not going to go through all their tactics cards. I'm not going to make a roster for you right now. I just want to put some thoughts out there um, on why why maybe this leadership, I mean, it's really good. And why aren't people playing it more? I mean, there's a couple of reasons I can think of, right? And there are some, one, I think the affiliation list, like, it's, it's not like the most popular characters in the world. Okay, so we want to go back and say, I think the Danger Room, like said, he doesn't think solo midnight suns can win a tournament a big tournament like he really he said that i'm pretty sure if he duels he said yeah but he doesn't think a solo midnight suns can win so that's like kind of a weird interesting challenge it's kind of interesting that he put them there because i don't know if i feel like they're there on that level i think and i was talking to collar about this and we were talking about midnight suns because we've been interested in a while and i was like why aren't people doing better with them given their leadership seems like super good and if I had to think of reasons, just off the top of my head, again, I don't, I'm not disparaging any Midnight Suns player that's out there. Um, I know there's some people doing well with them. I've played some good ones. I think it would be, you know, they're not that popular. Similar to Convocation not being popular, they're getting more popular now. Uh, you know, the character, I mean, Blade is not the most interesting character. I mean, people love them in the comics, I guess I don't care. 
But it's just like, you know, Iron Fist, Cat, Voodoo. Like, these aren't like X-Men, Avengers type level of um, cool characters. They don't have a really... De- they have a decent sized roster, Give, I guess, all things considered. But it's, again, you're not... It's not this really, like, blow you away. Wow, what the coolest ten models I've ever read in comics or the movies. Um, I think that's one. I think the idea of Blade being an anchor, while maybe not untrue, is overstated somewhat. Again, this is with only playing one Midnight Suns game. Maybe I'll be wrong, and I'm willing to be wrong. And I'm not definitely going to throw out a big argument that that's not the case. But maybe that mindset stops people. Um, I think the big ones are one, I, th- and I think Sooner also talked about this in, in the chat itself, is I think people have an over-reliance on iHawk. Great, he's a good model. He's a great noob stomper, and I think it's very difficult for players. I think he's harder to play against than to play in a lot of instances. We're just like jamming him down somebody if they can't deal with him, or if he rolls hot, it's very hard. Um, especially if like, it's not hot top level gaming. And so I think people rely on him a lot, maybe when they shouldn't. Um, and I think the other one is just people are just bad at the game. I mean, I think there's nothing, there's just a lot of people who aren't that good at this game. And so if you don't get somebody playing them a ton and we'll say championing them in a way, like you just won't see the results, right? That's just. It's with any affiliation. You, I mean, the big ones have enough people that they're not only good, but they have enough popularity and enough people thrown at them to, like, somebody's going to do well with it, right? Um, with, like, webs and Wakanda and stuff. And, and things like Spirit of Wakanda bombs, like, turn on a lot of, like, early stuff that, again, it kind of has the IHawk thing, but in a different way where if the opponent isn't prepared for it, it wins much more easily. Um and so people talk about, is Wakanda actually that good? Blah, blah, blah. Probably is. But, I mean, I think Spirit's going to get... I think changes in the future are going to change the meta a bunch. And, obviously, some things I've talked about on videos that I think are changing, that I, I could see changing, um, whether it be Crisis Shakeups or Eyes on the Prize going away or R&D going away, I do think that some of the things, the rumors, or at least the ideas people have had, potentially turn on... Midnight Suns a little bit because I'll give you. I mean, let's just do the basic example, right? And it'll be one of the things we talk about. If you get rid of Eyes on the Prize, there's only so many safe grabs left in the game. And Midnight Suns are one of the ones that have built in safe grabs with several models, um, given the bump and stuff like that. So it's an interesting one from that perspective. Uh, That being said, let's talk a little bit about the leadership and what uses it has and why i think it's kind of interesting so it's a one inch place for one power that's it once per turn i mean there's nothing else to it it's called bump in the night i believe and so why is it important i think when you really start to like put models on the board and so this is why i'm kind of talking about this instead of actual affiliated models or splashes and stuff like this i think if you want to get the max out of the leadership you need to somewhat understand the distances it it kind of covers and what it what does it give you like what edges does it give you so i'll give you kind of a basic non-example right let's just you know let's just start with something you have a medium base medium mover this is not one but it's what i have out or a small base medium mover right if he moves and he bumps, did I measure that right? Hold on. Let me make sure I have this all right. Right? If you have a medium base, medium mover, or small base, medium mover, and he moves and he bumps, da, 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 da. he should not. He is just out of range, or a good half an inch of the midline, right? That's important to know because you basically don't give him anything. So if this is scoundrels, for example, or a midline grab or just something like intrusions or something with a midline point, he doesn't get anything 
by bumping for the most part. Like he's a little bit closer. So example that I like to use is, so let's take a medium bass, medium mover, right? Like, like Voodoo, for example, or anyone. There's so many of these, Ultron, Driscoll, whatever. You know, you come here, you move once, and then you bump. You're now in on the midline, right? So this is significant in a couple ways. If you had two power like Bill or Hella, you could pick up an extract and you have another move to walk away. Or even if you're not them, you have the ability to make an attack from where you are. So even if even if there wasn't a extract here, if it was just a point like demons or intrusions or something, scoundrels, there would be something for you to do. And so if you think of, you know, something I've talked about in some of my videos where I find like doing early like early activations, early turns, you almost need to be pretty efficient with like getting points and forcing enemies to do things. And so from an efficiency standpoint, if you think about the first two turns, everybody gets barring charges and whatnot or other out of activation stuff, gets two moves, four actions, right? So how are you going to spend those actions? Well, I've talked about this before in other videos for other affiliations. If you know you got to get to the midline, like whether you walk twice in turn one or you walk, attack, walk, attack in the first two turns, you're going to end up spending two actions to get to the middle. And so what bump does in this particular sense is it says, hey, you get to the middle in one action plus a bump, which gives you basically if two, in two turns you want to be on the middle, you've done it. You, you've gotten to the middle and you get to have, make three attacks now. So essentially over two turns, you, you maybe get an extra attack. If that's like a very basic example, right? It's a very, very basic one. But it's a real one. Like, it's a real thing. And so that's, I think I've talked about with Ultron. So when I was playing Convocation, a lot of the times, you know, people would talk about, oh, I'm going to give a power from Wong. And I'm going to, you know, teleport my Ultron up with Strange and blah, blah, blah. And that's good. It's not bad. I mean, I teleport my Strange all the time. But depending, like, if you want to go to the midline, like, he still has to walk one more time. The three doesn't get him there. So the fact that he has to walk again... The fact that he has to walk again means you're basically, like, okay, he can get a little bit more forward on it, for example. That's an example, you know. Sure, when you bump, you're only here instead of here. And so, th yes, there is value there. I'm not going to say no. But to some extent, bump isn't that much different than placing three. And one costs four power and one costs one. So, like, because it covers that distance, it, you know, in this game, it, it does... I'm trying to think how to put it. Does it kind of make sense what I'm saying where I'm like... It almost treats itself as a, as a move action to some extent. It's not perfect, but it does in some extent. Um... So that's really cool that like it gets it there. Uh, you know, the same for a large base small mover like a Juggernaut, right? Juggernaut, if you took him, could walk. Oh, he's not that fast. Walk bump does get you to the midline. It's either safe grab or attack somebody who's in the middle. Or just stand there and throw it. Yeah, throw an attack. That's why Ultron with this, like I don't really want to play Ultron in Midnight Suns, but... One reason I could see it being useful, besides being like, oh, it's something to get him back when people throw him away and stuff, is turn one, he can walk, bump onto a midline objective, and shoot somebody. He basically gets an action if he wants. Um, you know, similar to be said, uh, you know, one thing that's maybe unique is, so this is, these are the Fs, right? And so, a medium base, you know, we all know a long base or, can, or a long mover can get all the way to the enemy's um, F or B. We've seen that done a lot of times. But in Midnight Suns, like a medium base, a medium mover, small base, like a, a Iron Fist can do it too with a bump. So whether it's a pay to flip or scoundrel or something, he can get he can traverse turn one and get all the way out there. Um, uh, long movers like Cat, for example, could walk and bump onto a midpoint themselves, right? She could walk and bump, and, you know, maybe maybe somebody's standing there already, and you get a free attack off, right? Like, this could be 
these bumps early turns could be attacks that you wouldn't otherwise get. Um, I think some obvious ones would be similar to Convocation, but the opposite. If somebody attacks you from range 4 and you're a range 3 model, you know that at the top of your turn you can bump forward and attack them. Right? That's... In fact, something interesting with like Voodoo, for example, or anybody on a medium base that has a side, a medium throw. Medium throw is range five, range four is range eight, a bump plus your base is three. So essentially, I'll give you, an, you know, if somebody attacked uh, Voodoo from range four, like exactly at four, right? And he was able to bump like directly at them. Not only would he be within range three of possession, he would also be within range to pick up the token as well. I mean, it's not, you have to be perfectly doing it, but assuming that you were, you know, it's basically does touch. Assuming you moved everything perfectly forward and they, you know, no one's going to be exactly at four all the time. But the idea is there is they hit you at range four, you can bump forward, possess them, or throw them, or be in me medium range for a throw. Um, like those distances matter. You know, another one would be. A D shape, right? So these are the D's out here. Um, normally, a model like Voodoo would take two walks to rotate, but he can walk and which one's the D? Is it this one? I forget now. Is it the far one? Oh yes, the far one. So, like, if he was on the inside of this one, which I think he makes it, right? Yeah, there we go. I was just doing it wrong. He can make it from D to D, right? So he can go back and forth with a bump, which is important because... It basically means he gets a free attack if he wants in between, whereas normally he'd have to double walk to go back and forth. So on D shape, something like that, you know, Sam, for example, or, or Gwenum is probably a better example. Gwenum can walk and bump one and get within that point. And so now she gets a free attack if she wants. Same with Cat, same with all these things. Uh, cat with the, somebody attacks Cat within range two. She can bump to steal and then walk away, as opposed to normally, unless she could glide, which takes a lot of power to glide and bump, or glide and steal, you know, she can steal and get back because it covers the distance needed. So there's things like this where, so one that I like that I think is kind of funny is Senators. I think That's why I like playing, I think Senators is really good with uh, uh, these guys. And I want to play Senators with them because I feel like they're really good at it for two reasons. One is, so for example, you're taking Voodoo, right? Or Bill. Bill's not the greatest example. Or Hella, whatever, right? If you're playing D-shaped Senators, which happens, right? You can steal their Senator, which is here. And bump back to a side D, that whole like two for one thing, something we talked about in Convocation, um, but you can do it now with them and you can actively do it. You don't have to get hit or anything like that. But something kind of cool with Gwenum would be, you know, we've talked about the distance between people taking centers on the other side, for example. And if you're really brave, you can do this, but, um, does this matter? This doesn't matter. I guess you don't need bump for this one. You would just walk up. Okay, well, she's good for this. You don't need bump. But you walk up, you can pick up this senator, attack somebody who's across from you, and then get a free walk over here if you want. She's kind of cool because you can basically rotate really well on senators with her because you could bump, attack somebody, get a free move, attack somebody, get a free move. So essentially, you get to double walk with her and bump every time you have a senator on you, and you can really get around the map. So she's just naturally good at it being senators. But the fact that Bump turns on her move, she can get around really fast. And because she's a long base um, mover, she can um, she can do what I just said. I guess in, in theory, I'm like if you had two power, like a Hello, for example, you could 
Can you do it? Let's see. This is actually a cool one. I actually want to know if this works. Let's just use let's use Hella for an example. What can you get to? If you go here, no, I don't need that either for this. This and this is why I think, um, you know, doing things like I'm doing now is really important when doing these like leadership. But it's not. And again, this is not a like, oh my god, turn one is so important. You need to map out everything. But if you don't know what your options are, if you don't know what you're able to do, then that kind of sucks, doesn't it? Like, if you don't know what's possible, then you won't be able to set yourself up for cool things. So, like, for example, Iron Fist could walk the, the center up here. Right? Bump. Pick up. He, you know, he could walk, walk, but then if somebody's on this point, potentially he could attack them. I don't know if he covers every single thing. And so, one, your opponent would have to know that he couldn't do it. But, like, he could potentially, if they walk somebody here, you could walk, pick up this bump, pick up this senator, and then attack somebody over here. Right? That's a senator play. The one I was thinking about over here, and I don't know yet, was Hella. If she walks up. So we've we've done this range before. You are not within range two, three. If you if say are on the back of the senator, but you could bump yourself with Hella to like here, right? You you wouldn't be able to measure this because of the way bump works. Oh, it's this one, right? Oh no, it's it's the one up top. What am I doing? What am I doing? I would never go past it, right? See, this is why you got to measure these things. So bump gets you there. Yeah, there's no way you go past it. You just you just go straight forward as close as you can. Right? And now you get a chance to attack that you wouldn't have got before. Um, and I wonder if there's something... Let me just see something. I was curious if... Uh, if she could do something cheeky... She bumped over here. No. Damn. I can't end up outside of it because it's all the way over here. There is something a little cheeky where, like, depending. I do think if you did have Hella, you would just steal her layers and walk backwards, or Bill, for example. But there is probably something a little cheeky you could do where, like, you walk up, take your bump, take your own, attack them. And then, depending if you get the, um, if you get a power, you could do her little range three walk towards somebody, um, to get another move. So I guess you could, like, go here, bump to here, and if somebody is on this point, like, do the same thing I just talked about, like, attack and then get your free thing. If you get a power, you get to move. Again, it's optional stuff. Like you don't, you're not always gonna get it. Um, but I think there, like I said, there's there's distances in the early game that really get cranked up with uh, bumps. And then obviously throughout the game, being able to, the big one being like Iron Fist gets attacked at range four, which is out of his martial artist range, which a lot of people do, but. You know, normally you would not be able to attack back right away, but if it bump, you can bump. And if you have a straight line to bump at them, you'll get within three and now you can start attacking with your flying kick and stuff. So it saves. I guess the point being is bump is not a move action. Bump is not the same distance as a move action. It never will be. But there are instances in this game where sometimes it's almost as good as one. Right? Like, it almost gives you an extra action only by placing one. The same as a, as bumping convocation gets you out of range a lot. Red Skull is a good example. Another one, Red Skull 2, right? He can bump towards people. And the fact that he can bump towards people means if they attack him at range 4, he can clap back with two attacks at range 3. I think that's, like, the example you're going to see the most is just range 4 and 3. The fact that they're... Um, 
they're two inches apart and bumping any model at least two inches is a big one. Um, range three, right? If you hit somebody at range three and they're a range two model like Hulk or big bases are easy, but like iHawk or something, they can, they they have to be able to bump into assuming straight line. This is where people, you know, it's hard to play around, but you can, if you really know what you're doing, if he bumps at you, he's in range two now and he saved an activation. Um, stuff like that. And so I think that's something that needs to be to some extent explored. It's obviously a really good, um, it's a good ability. I, I don't know what else to say. I actually, one thing I do wonder is, um, I don't think there's no way, right? How far does it get you? I'm just trying to think. Yeah, it's not far at all. I guess depending. I mean, you only get to the midline, but if somebody places over the midline, you could bump and do a range four to them. But most like you're walking, bumping, attacking type stuff. Like, like Iron Fist can do stuff like that. I'll probably give them pay to flips. Um, is there any other distance that's like kind of cool? I mean, I'm sure there are ones. I mean, even just like I mean, you can get between. So like. Like, if you're ever playing... I, this is why I think Senders is good. Because if you're playing, like, Senders Infinity, like... Like, Danny can double walk to here. This is why I like Iron Fist a lot, but I'm not going into just specifics, right? Danny can double walk to here and then bump back to an Infinity, for example. That seems pretty cool, right? I like that. He has the option of walk, bump, and depending on where somebody positions himself on a back scoundrel he could either walk to get within range or he might be in range to attack and place behind him um just to be annoying like that similar to cat and whatnot um but i think if you if you think about some of these as the you know early rounds people that maybe want to be on the midline maybe if you're taking midline stuff um the fact that you get advantages out of it Maybe you take the scenarios more. Um, maybe for rotations, it becomes better. I think it's really interesting on the DMAP, like being able to rotate with long base people or medium base, medium movers, um, like but with one walk going back and forth. Uh, maybe you can out rotate some people while still being attacks in, which is like a big thing on Deep Shapes. Um, but yeah, I, I want to explore them more. Um, maybe I'll play some games with them. Not for TTS League or anything. I'm not that brave, and I'm not that good enough with them yet. And then, obviously, you could go even deeper into, like, this is just talking about bumps, which is the leadership. I mean, there's cards like Siege and stuff, which is one of the best cards in the game, one other reason to play them. They're going to be getting new models soon. I, the new Back Panther is Midnight Suns, which is should be pretty good for them. Um, they have a lot of dr draw to play affiliated, heavy affiliated, because of their cards. Um, so it's kind of cool that you're playing, like, six, seven Midnight Suns, maybe five on the low end probably five probably six is what i would say you're probably going to playing six to seven midnight suns plus some splashes um i think i think they're in a spot now where they're probably not going to be killed in some way by the meta by sorry by any sort of updates um you know with some of the rumors we've heard of maybe researcher going away or 15s going away period eyes on the prize going away or rotating Things like Deception, Age of Ultron. Um, I don't think any of these hurts them. And in fact, the Eyes on the Prize one, and probably 15s to some extent, probably helped them more so. Um, and so you go with the idea of, you know, I, I Hulk isn't the main plan, he's a plan. I think there's some interesting things you can do. Because people always have to respect the I Hulk. That's the other thing too, right? Like, the implication that you could play iHawk makes people be like, oh, shit, I gotta, I gotta maybe take something for him. And I think you can, I don't want to say catch people, but I think not, him not being there, yeah, you might catch some people in it a little bit. Anyway, thanks for listening.